Hi people, it's Sarkovist here and welcome to the Warlords of Draenor beta. Please keep in mind that this is a beta and therefore everything you see here is subject to change. Okay, so we have trekked through the treacherous Tanan jungle and now we find ourselves in the Frostfire Ridge. When I was going through the Tanan jungle and I mentioned that it was quite a fast zone to go through, at least the segment I was doing, I thought that would begin to fizzle out a bit. I thought as we went into the next zone it would begin to slow down because we've had this before where the opening to the expansion is always the best bit and then it starts to hit walls. You go to your conventional quest hubs and you just go out, kill a few monsters and you stay there for almost too long and it can get a bit boring, it can almost be played out. But here you are moving around constantly. You stay in the same area for about 20 minutes and then you move on. It's thanks to this moving quest hub thing they've got going on. So if you know if you're trying to invade a uh, spire of a, of sorts, there was like a giant rock spire in this. Rather than going a certain amount of time and then having to go back to the camp and turn the quest in, going a bit further, turn the quest in. You go forward and then you turn the quest in, but the people have come with you, so you don't have to go back. And then you instantly take the next quest and you move further and further in. It really makes the flow of the game feel a lot stronger, especially as you're doing so many of these quests with the iconic characters such as Thrall and Duratan. And there's this really awesome bit where Thrall unleashes his earthly wind power. And it's really impressive to see this in just a general quest. This is just some quest. This isn't a dungeon. This isn't a raid. This is a really spectacular spell animation just happening. The game has come so far. I remember when seeing things like this was such a rarity, but now it's just happening all the time. I do wonder if parts have been left out because this is the beta and they only want to show the best bits. But if this is how the game actually is going to unfold, where you're really just going from greatness to greatness, that's going to be awesome. Also, for those of you who think that World of Warcraft is just about killing boars, well, you know, you're you're sort of on the on the money there. But hey, these are some pretty big boars. I mean, look at this guy, massive. It's like they've embraced the fact, okay, you know, we've got some stigmas, let's roll with it. And this is some... This is a big boar, baby. This is uh, a mighty angry pig. I also thought I'd get a very good look at Juratan here, and like many of the other warlords, he's got a really great amount of detail on him. I'm not sure if he actually counts as a warlord, though. He's on the cover with the others, but he's definitely a good guy, so it's hard to say. Also, one of my favourite enemy types from the Burning Crusade have returned in quite a big way here. A big way in two senses, because you've got the Gron. They're like these gigantic ogre cyclops. Uh, type creatures. If you recall back to the uh, days in the Grand, there was this quite notorious quest where you had to kill this gigantic Gron called Dern the Hungerer, and that's a really memorable quest to me because I remember fighting in the Grand, and it wasn't till the end we got to kill him, and I remember thinking, wow, he's going to be fun to kill, and I remember thinking he was a really awesome looking enemy model. And it's really great that this zone is filled with Gron, and you've got these Gronlings, which are like these mini Gron. And they haven't skimped out on the detail for them either. They've got some great amount of detail on them. But you also fight these major gruns. I haven't come across one of the same size as Dern the Hungerer yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar. Now moving on to the garrison side of things, and I have only dipped my toe into the water of what I believe will be a gigantic lake because Blizzard clearly want to push garrisons. It seems like quite an interesting aspect to Warlords of Drainer, actually. So, what have I done so far? Well, I established my outpost, it's got this nice panoramic view of it, you can see, very nice. But then I was asked to create a barrack so you can actually build structures and put them where you want in the garrison. And over the time you can actually level up the buildings. A great bonus of having a garrison as well is that when you build a certain structure, like say a barracks, you can call in a special ability in general combat. So in this one I can do a call to arms and then a bunch of headhunters and warriors will come in and start fighting alongside me or just fight for me because they actually do a hell of a lot of damage. Although to be fair there is a long cooldown so it's not something that can be abused too much. Also it seems that you can send characters out on missions, a bit like what you do in the Assassin's Creed games with Kenway's fleet and the uh, Assassin's Guild and such. I haven't really looked into what the benefits of doing this are yet but I'm sure it's worthwhile. Uh, I, I honestly am not quite sure why I did it, I just followed the quest guidance for the time being. When it comes to the questing in Frostfire, the thing is, uh, the objectives themselves are fairly conventional. Even the ones around the garrison you just have to go around and collect items and bring them back. It's kind of the um, atmosphere that surrounds what you're doing that's making this seem more new. So, for example, in the simple mission where you have to go and meet up with a quest giver, in getting to them you have to 
walk up a ramp with all these giant flaming balls coming down at you and you have to try and dodge them and that's pretty awesome. And also the mission where you have to go kill that giant boar and some gron, you're accompanied by Durotan and Thrall and that makes what could have been such a boring quest turn into something quite fun and, you know, really enjoyable. Also, and I am a bit biased because I am a bit of a solo player in these uh, MMOs, I'm really glad that they're not leaving solo players out. Instead of having to team up with people, you can just go along with these iconic characters instead of having to find people who... It's, it's really fun when you actually know people when you're playing with them, but when you just have to find some random person to play with, it can be a bit of a hassle. It's nice if you meet someone cool when you get to know them, but otherwise it can just be a chore um, and even aggravating if someone's you know, halfway across the zone and they have to trek all the way over there. Aside from the Ogre and the Gron that I mentioned before though, we've also seemed to have these Chimera, I'm going to call them Chimera because that's how I generally remember them, as these two-headed monster dragon things. Now we all know that Blizzard love to recycle models, but I'm glad they're at least doing it with a model that hasn't been used too much, and they've really uh, added some extra detail onto them, so it's the same basic skeleton model, so they've got the same animations, but the general look to them looks very new. You know, they look, they certainly don't look uh, like a recycled model, even though they actually are. They look quite impressive, and um, if they're the uh, taxi mount for this zone, it will give it a more distinct look and feel. It's also interesting to get a sense of how difficult rares are to kill because if I recall back to when I was doing Mists of Pandaria for the first time, so when the game had just come out, I remember finding rares and they were basically very tricky to solo. I'm sure there are people out there who can do it, but I'm afraid I was not skillful enough personally to do it and I would always ask for help and often when I had to ask in general for help to do it, uh, someone else would have come along and taken the kill anyway and that was quite frustrating. But the uh, rare in this particular zone, as long as I popped a lot of my cooldowns, was fairly easy to take down. And I'm glad that what they've done is they've kept some of the challenge. They're not easy, they're not a uh, walk in the park, but they are manageable by yourself. And I think it's important to allow the game to be soloable if you want it to be. This rare that you're seeing me fight now, it was difficult, and I actually thought I was going to die at one point, but it was by no means overwhelming. So these were just my first impressions of the Frostfire Ridge and Garrisons. As always, people, thanks very much for watching, and see you next time. Subscribe to the Archivist 42 channel for gaming top fives, reviews, and more.